I guess it's a lifestyle thing. I really wanted to be able to be home for the children. I wanted to be able to be flexible with my hours and I wanted to be outside. I didn't want to be cooped up inside in an office. We had three children and they're all getting bigger and our house was quite small. So we were looking around and thinking about building on and we really like the Hurufenua area. It's really great for growing and my husband's got a lot of horticultural experience and background so when we saw this place we thought what an opportunity so we thought we'd give it a go and that's when we started our big learning curve we've only got 2.6 acres but most of it's in work so so it's busy we've always had a garden a small garden but when we moved here um, we hadn't I hadn't thought of myself as an organic market gardener so that's kind of the background i i have um, studied in resource management so i've always been interested in environmental issues and environmental education um, and my husband's environmental science so we sort of yeah we sort of have that background but i i never saw myself actually growing tons of vegetables <laughs> and seedlings yeah there's a few different facets to the property. We've got the, the market gardening, the organic growing, so that's produce. Then we've got the seedlings for organic gardeners to grow and herbs and a few grasses. Plus we grow the natives and they're, they're for um, their contract work for regional council and they're bulk plants to grow for them. So the actual organic growing, the, the produce doesn't break even. The seedlings and the, and the herbs, um, they break even and the natives do well. So really the natives are there to, they help to prop up the organic stuff, which I really like doing. I'm also growing lots of stuff for bee fodder as well. That's another thing, the boundary plantings for bee, it's for the bee fodder, but I've also got lots and lots of lavender I'm planting around the place and, and learning more about what plants are for bees as well. We've got enough to supply it our family for the year easily but really one hive could do that and we've got four so yeah and really out here I grow bits and pieces so there's zucchinis and tomatoes but we had the biggest frost we've had yet this year so they've all just um, wilted um, we've got beetroot silver beet strawberries lettuces mescaline and a big herb garden at the back and um, I just grow whatever herbs I can and mainly I use it for our food but sometimes people ask me for fresh herbs so I uh, bring it to market and I have um, done some dried oregano at one stage I dried a whole lot and sold it but generally actually the herbs are the herbs and the herb better for um, culinary use at our house yeah <laughs> I love fresh herbs in fact after using fresh herbs I don't ever want to go back to dried ones yeah it's really nice we're all, um, we, well, except for my husband, we all eat vegetarian here, so um, flavour's really important and fresh herbs are really important. Yeah, yeah. I haven't always wanted to do organics, but um, probably over the last 10 years, that's where we've been heading. Uh, about five years ago, we started an organic co-op, so we were, we've been buying all our own dried foods from there. Um, and meeting a lot of people who are growing organics, got quite big gardens and things like that. We've always had a garden, a small garden, but when we moved here, um, we hadn't, I hadn't thought of myself as an organic market gardener. So that's kind of the background. I, I have um, studied in resource management, so I've always been interested in environmental issues and environmental education. Um, and my husband's environmental science so we sort of yeah we sort of have that background but I I never saw myself actually growing tons of vegetables <laughs> and seedlings yeah I guess I actually didn't know what I was getting into when I when I started it all seemed very ideal and um, and great going into the growing industry and organic growing in particular um, but from what I've learned in the last three years, it's, it's really, really hard work. It's really hard work and um, it's fantastic, but it's, it definitely 
isn't what I thought it w would be when I started out. Big, 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 big. Um, mainly I do the work, but when Caleb can, he, he does. But he's really busy, he's doing his masters at the moment and um, working four days a week as well. So he does as much as he can and then it's really me, yeah. Somebody said to me that organics really is not about growing plants, but about growing soil. And that it is. That's exactly what it is. We've spent the last three years growing our soil. We're just putting more and more and more stuff in and trying to work out what a good soil is. And it's difficult. So those are the compost bins that one of our long-term woofers built and they're getting really full. They're actually really huge gombos bins and they take heaps to fill. So my husband goes once a week and collects horse poo and um, we started with this one down the end and as you can see he's just added grass clippings on top but that one should just about be ready and then he's worked his way through the other ones. Um, yeah but they do, they take a lot, they take a lot of poos <laughs> to fill those. We go to the beach and collect seaweed when it's come up on the beach and we use fish guts. So my husband goes fishing and he brings home the fish and then the skeletons and the guts all go in a big barrel. So we have a few different barrels going. And now um, the flash name for that is compost tea. So there's the seaweed one there. I think this one might have chicken poo in it. This one's got fish guts in it. And water, we just fill the 40 gallon drum up to the top and we let that sit. And you know, we might use that after three weeks time and I spray that straight onto the plants, or if I'm preparing a garden, I might put the slops in, so I'll just get bucketfuls of it and just slop it onto the garden. And one of the rules with the compost teas is that it should be a weak tea colour. Yeah, the others, I actually feed them once a week, all the plants, I haven't fed them this week, but before that, I've been feeding them with our big fertiliser once a week. So I just scoop out stuff with the ice cream container and add it to our big feeder which takes 200 litres of water. So mainly that's what I do for building, plus the, with the soy building I also mulch. So we've got a source for non-treated wood shavings and then anything around our property that we chop down that's small enough we'll mulch. I did a, um, a big plan for these gardens out here um, with rotation, all organised and I did lots of companion planting then but I'm more interested in rotational planting, making sure that the soil gets a rest. 